Hello everyone, this is Jasser Mutlak from StellarMate. In this video, we'll be covering some basic aspects of ECOS. So before using ECOS, you need to make sure that all your equipment are connected to StellarMate and all the equipment should be powered and online and ready to go. Uh, before we begin uh, with the demonstration here, uh, you can see here the main toolbar for uh, case stars. There are a couple of more toolbars that are useful that we can enable right now. So go to settings, go to toolbars shown, and then select the telescope toolbar. Also, if you have a dome or a roll off roof, like what I have right here, let's go ahead and enable the dome toolbar. And it doesn't show right now, but once we are connected to the dome, it will show up. Now let's go ahead and click on the ECOS icon here, which it looks like a small dome. And this is the primary uh, ECOS uh, page. In this page, it's the summary page. So it displays the summary of your session. And it's also the setup page. Here we have the profile selection and the controls to start the server and connect to StellarMate. So, to add a new profile, we just simply click the plus sign right here. But there is also this little icon which would launch the Ecos profile wizard. So for a first time, a first time users, I suggest we use this. So let's just click on that. Let's click next after the introductory screen. And here it's, it's ask us where is your equipment connected. So if you're running ECOS on StellarMate, so if you're connected to StellarMate via VNC or you're using HTMI, then you would use the first option. If, on the other hand, you're running ECOS on your laptop or desktop PC, then you would select this option here, which, which is that the equipment, they're connected to StellarMate. So in my case, the StellarMate is uh, upstairs along with the equipment and the observatory, so I'll be selecting this option here. So by default, the, the host name for StellarMate is StellarMate.local. And so uh, we normally you would not need to use that. In my case, I changed the name to the observatory name. So I changed it to Icarus by, and I'll be using this. And so now we can click Next. Now it'll ask us about the profile name. I'll keep it as it is. The geyser application that you'd like to use, and uh, it's recommended to keep the internal guider unless uh, you have a good reason to use BHD2 or link guider. And it will uh, ask us if we need to run any additional services. So if you just hover over this option, it will give you more information about what they do. In my case, I always use the watchdog driver since it uh, performs a graceful shutdown of the observatory in case there is problems with the connection. And this is really important when uh, you know dealing with remote observatories. So that's it, let's just create the profile now. And here we do the driver selection. If we click, for example, on the mount, you see here a selection of uh, mounts we can choose from. If you're curious about all the kind of devices that are supported by StellarMate, you can visit the um, the India website where there is like a complete directory for devices and you can you know navigate uh, each driver and its features and how to operate it in details. Okay, so let's go back to KSTARS. So I have a EQ8 mount, so I'll be using EQ mod driver. For CCD, I have QSI CCD. Sorry, it should be it's supposed to be QSI CCD. For the guider, I have Starlight Express camera. So I'll use, um, I have a load star, so I'll be using the Starlight Express uh, driver. For the Focuser, I'll be using the night crawler rotator. So it's a rotator focuser. The filter is already built in the CCD, so no need there. 
uh, for the dome, uh, actually I have my own like custom dome and uh, it's not listed here in the drivers because it's uh, the driver is running on Stellar Mate. So in this case, you can just put the uh, the device name. In my case, it's Icarus Roof. Uh, for the weather station, I currently have none. And then here we selected the watchdog driver. And I also have flip flat. which is like the dust cover. And I think we're set. I think this is uh, pretty much all. In here, it will ask us to select the telescopes that we would like to use. And if you just leave it at default, then you can set the telescope properties later. But let's actually define the, the telescope right now. So just click on the plus sign here and it will show this configure equipment dialog. Click add new. Well, actually, we can we can uh, directly start uh, adding the information and then click add new after we're done. So the vendor, I have Orion, um, Eon 120 millimeter telescope. The driver, it doesn't really matter. You can uh, set it to none. The type of refractor, the aperture 120, but the focal length is 900. And uh, if your system focal length is affected by like using a focal reducer or some spacers, you really need to put the final focal length after all these optical train changes and not necessarily like, you know, the telescope row focal length. It's really important to do this. For my case, I don't have any accessories on it that would change its focal length significantly. So I would leave it at the focal length uh, as reported by, by the manufacturer. Okay, so now let's uh, save uh, the telescope. And there we go, we have it here. So we can select the telescope. And also the guide scope is the same thing because uh, the QSI is using a, a, the, the Starlight Express driver is an off-axis guider. And I don't know why this was changed to uh, Starfish. It's Starlight Express SXCCD. Okay, we're good to go now. So let's just save our profile. And then simply now we just click Start ND. And now we just waited uh, for everything to get connected. And here we see actually the icon for um, unparking the dome. And here you see the telescope is now, uh, telescope toolbar is also active. Okay, so it looks like everything is online right now. And here you can see that the telescope information is already filled out for us. If we select the default in the primary screen here, in the profile, then we would have to fill this information here for the telescope aperture and focal length, and then simply click uh, Save Telescope Info. Okay, so the first thing I need to do, I need to unpark the dome, the roll of dome, dome, sorry. Okay, so now this is taking place. I'll just have to wait for it. Um, so now this is like, it's everything is connected, but in your case, if this is your first time connected to uh, StarMate, you might have issues with the connection. Uh, especially for the selection of the ports. So uh, in Windows, you're used to the notion of se selecting serial ports like COM1, COM2, COM3, and you know that these are usually randomly assigned. It's the same thing on Linux, but they use different names. And you can see here, like for example, the EQ mod port is slash dev slash mount, but this is because I used 
the Stellar Mate Serial Port Assistant, uh, which allows us to permanently assign designations to the mount and focuser and other devices. And there is a separate tutorial, your video tutorial, on how to use the Stellar Mate Serial Port Assistant tool. It's really useful. So in case you have any problems uh, when you're connecting, uh, you need to make sure that the port is correct, the baud, the baud rate is correct if you're using serial connection. If you're using Ethernet connection, you need to make sure the device is on the same network as Salarmate, that the ports are correct, that the hostname is correct. If you click here on scan ports, you will see the, all the serial ports that are available or detected by Stellarmate on your device. Right now, everything is connected just fine, and the dome um, already unparked. Now, let me. The next thing I need to do, in my case, I need to unpark the uh, the dust cover. And then uh, I also will unpark the telescope. So now my my telescope is pointing at the roughly at the North Celestial Pole. Uh, the first thing I usually do after this is I go to any nearby star. So let's say let's go. I go to uh, CAF here. So I will track. I'll just wait for the mount to get there. And then I will go to ECOS alignment modulo. And let me just set an exposure of five seconds, painting four by four, filter uh, luminance. And I think we're good to go. And yeah, we're using the primary telescope. Okay. So now the telescope is not really aligned yet. Uh, or sorry, the mount is not aligned yet. So it thinks it's looking at this star, but it's probably a bit off. Um, and you can find out more about the alignment settings if you go to the driver and you go to options first. So you see here the alignment method, which is EQ mode align. And of course you can explore this in more detail and there are there is documentation on India website on how to utilize this. Okay, so without further ado, let's just click uh, capture and solve. Okay, so now because of the uh, filter policy, uh, it changed the filter to luminance. It was initially uh, the different filter and um, it runs an autofocus operation automatically uh, after um, it changes the filter. This is because of the of the filter settings policy that I have here. And this is an advanced topic that I'll cover in a different video. Okay, so I'll pause this video until this autofocus operation is complete and I'll continue after it. Okay, so the autofocus operation is complete and now it's uh, capturing an image. And now it's now iterating until it finds a solution. Now in this case, uh, I selected the, the offline solver, uh, but it's uh, StellarMate comes with its own also asymmetry solver. So if you selected the remote asymmetry in the device profile, you can select this option here as well. So we're almost at the center. Okay, and there we go. We are at this uh, pretty very close to the center right now. So uh, I think it's uh, uh, good to stop here uh, as this was a good demonstration on how to connect to ECOS and uh, make perform like a basic alignment for your mount. And now you can simply slow to any other object 
and capture uh, any image of interest. So this was like a, a very uh, short introduction to using ECOS with StellarMate. And we'll be covering uh, the different modules. We have the capture, focus, guiding, and alignment. We'll cover them more in detail in future tutorials. Thank you for watching.